books and galleries. first permanent art installation, which is the scene of reptilian slaughter based on the David Icke books. You see the uh, reptiles eating the human babies and Queen Elizabeth looking on approving them. Uh, well, I was Jennifer's boyfriend. <laughs> I was actually, um, it was actually, she was sort of the, the face of Germ, but we, it was a business partnership. Um, I was kind of the silent partner. But I, I, you know, I did work in the store, and I would go on library sales and things with her, and set up the snack table at UFO Discussion Group. So I had always been around, but now I'm kind of running the show. <laughs> yeah, well, Jennifer was, uh, just off the cuff, was a first-generation punk rocker, which is to say that she got into the Ramones and the Sex Pistols and things in the late 70s. Um, and uh, she was also a painter. Uh, and at one point she spent a year living in a basement studying physics and drawing the obvious and somewhat less obvious comparisons between physics and alchemy. So, um, where does that lead us to germ? Deep in the back of her head, she always wanted to start a bookstore. And at one point in early 2004, she said, let's do it. We had just moved to Fishtown. It seemed, you know, the up and coming neighborhood that everyone says it was. Rental for a retail property was inexpensive enough that we could actually open one up. Um, and, uh, it did focus on things she liked, which was which were science fiction, particularly um, alternate histories and apocalyptic science fiction. We have a lot of occult books, um, conspiracy books, and also uh, she was heavily interested in the UFO phenomenon. We have a lot of that. UFO, conspiracy, alternate energy, Noah Schwab and Mind Express show, a sex for sex's sake, drugs and why we need them, hipsters, hippies, more hippies, where do they come from? Poetry, biography, literature. We have uh, two copies of Mandingo, if anyone's interested. In a lot of ways, it, you know, to paraphrase you know, Jennifer when she opened the store, a lot of the conspiracies are just kind of like fun. Uh, <laughs> You know, they're, uh, I don't know if you can curse on this film, but they're, they're sort of like mind fucks. You know, it's sort of like you pick up this book and it's like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Because in a lot of ways, if you found out many of these things to be true, what would you really do about it? Um, I wouldn't be too surprised to, to learn of like the most insidious conspiracy imaginable. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a whole sort of philosophical cul-de-sac that you kind of... You know, I don't think we're living in the Matrix, you know what I mean? You know, I, I don't... I, they talk a lot about the at the UFO meeting about, like, there's some people who go to the meetings and say, Oh, if the aliens ever announced their presence, the churches would collapse, the governments would collapse. I, I don't think that's true. No, I don't think so either. I think, I think people as would... far as churches collapsing, people... People would still want to believe in the supreme being, regardless yeah. if the aliens are here or not. And all it takes is one pope to say, okay, the earth's no longer flat. So they would just sign an encyclical that said, yes, God also made people on other planets. <laughs> that would be the end of it. 